Well, good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today we have a beer from a brewery here in Regina, Saskatchewan. It's about an hour walk from here. It's up on Hamilton Street. Um, a guy I met when he was in Niagara College is their brewmaster. Uh, he left Regina, went to Niagara for the college, stayed in Ontario for a while, and he's back in Regina. He is the brewmaster of Regina Brewing, Inc., and this is Regina Brewing's Regina Blonde. And it is 4.5% alcohol by volume and 9 IBU. So, very low on the IBU scale, which I'm perfectly okay with. Um, I really like, I really like the artwork, though to me, at the same time, like I said, I like, I like the, I like the, like, more subtle artwork better. This is very, very, very busy, but I still like it. It's, it's busy, but I like it. I think I like it because it is the, the band playing on the stage with the crowd there. It's, it's like showing you, hey, this is a good time to have this beer. Is that a party at this, at that? I kind of like that about it. Now, it says here ingredients are water, grain, yeast, and hops. So grain, are you... What you using, Chris? Chris, what you using as your grains? What you using? Is there any malted barley in that grain bill? Is it like... Millet? Rice? Sorghum? I know sorghum and millet aren't really grains, but, you know. Quinoa? <laughs> I'm just being a dick at this point. Uh, I, I always love reading ingredients and, and harassing people about what they say on the ingredients. I mean, usually you would see either barley and wheat or malted barley, malted wheat or, or malted barley, wheat flakes or malted barley corn. Um, but usually you don't see just grain. You don't normally just see grain on there, which really makes me wonder about it, right? Uh, it was $4.99 for the can at Urban Cellars. So, I mean, that's, that's a lot of money for just a 4.5% alcohol. I was actually going to go to the brewery and see if Chris was there today. That was my intention, was to go say hi to Chris. But um, tonight was their, their trivia night. And when we got there, there was no parking anywhere on the street. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think I want to go in to get that to get any beers and see if he's there because if he's not there if i don't see my buddy with his giant beard i've just kind of wasted my time coming here uh they have a lot of beer from what he said that i would love to try but i just i just didn't go in right i was like yeah we'll do this another time Okay, so 9 IBU. I believe if I remember correctly, Coors Light is something like 7 IBU. So 9 should make this a very easy drinking, very approachable brew. A little bit of haze, more haze than I expected. A beautiful golden color, a little bit of carbonation moving up there. Bright white head. There is a snap crackle pop in there. Sent out of the glass. It's 
if I just inhaled some foam and I still didn't smell anything out of the glass, out of the can, very subtle sweet notes. Very subtle sweet notes, and that is it. Now, all this being said, I mean, I know I'm not talking about a lot of notes in the, on the nose, which means I'm, I, I can't fail it on the smell, but I can't really give it great marks on the smell. Visual appeal of the beer and of the can, I like. The nose is meh, but at the same time, for what I'm seeing on the can, which is, you know, the, the concert going on with the crowd and all that going down, kind of what I'd expect it to smell like. I'd expect it to be just a very sessionable, easy drinking beer from what the can looks like and from the nine IBU and from the 4.5% alcohol and everything else. So, so far, although I can't say great things about the nose, I can say, it smells kind of like I expected it to. Cheers, slanche, prost, all that fun stuff. Okay. Um. Okay, here's what here's where I'm going with this, right? It's a big can. Five dollars a can. I don't know what it costs at the brewery itself. Maybe it's four dollars at the brewery. Maybe it's like three fifty. I don't know. But that is a very sessionable beer. That is a beer I could share with my mother, my grandmother, my well, why would I want to share it with my mother? But my grandmother, my my father, my uncles. I, I could drink that with some of my friends that hate craft beer. I could drink this with the Reverend, and I think he would really like it. I could drink this with a lot of people. It is exactly kind of what you want when you're looking for your, like, brewery's introductory beer, your brewery's mass beer, because every brewery should really look for a beer that more people will use as an entry-level beer. I know Rebellion is known for their lentil beer is like their easy entry beer. So this is probably Regina Brew Brewing Inc.'s easily entry beer. Um, after saying all that, I don't have a lot to say about this beer. It's a solid beer. It really is. It's a solid beer. I can't badmouth the beer. I can't... <sighs> I can't say anything bad about the beer. It's 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 a beer. It is a beer. I mean slight sweetness up at the forefront. Almost has a touch of astringency to it, which I would get from a lot of rice beers. I'm not saying it's a rice beer, it could be a lot of different things that cause that astringency. Just saying there is an astringency up at the front that gives me paradigms of rice beers. Very sweet, slightly astringent, very light bodied, easy drinking. After that sweetness, I get kind of a earthy, earthy undertone that just finishes and clears your palate. This is a great food pairing beer. Uh, I don't know if there is a kitchen at Regina Brewing Inc. But I could see this being a beer that you would have with a burger and fries or anything salty help wash that salt off. Anything like that. Uh, really nice beer. Out of 10. Sorry guys, I'm trying to speed up here. I'd probably go a 7. Thank you. Bye.